Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. Okay, let me be very blunt here. We're getting a pretty massive album bomb from the weekend next week. And while we did get a sizable one from Lil Uzi Vert, Again, it's manageable here, most of it thanks to being stuck below the top 40, but since most of the new Lil Uzi Vert songs here, they're just replacing the ones from last week, I'm more inclined to direct attention at the weirder undercurrents of the Hot 100 right now, because there are reasons why certain songs are surviving or even thriving, and how everybody putting all their money on streaming seems to be missing the bigger picture. But we are going to start off with our top 10, and The Box by Roddy Rich is still at number 1. But for how much longer? Yeah, it's huge YouTube still with very strong on-demand streaming, but the radio is slowly collapsing, and as I predicted, a real threat is surging up right now. Blinding lights by the weekend up to number two. Yeah, streaming isn't there yet this week, but it rules sales and still has consistent radio growth. When you factor in the streaming boost of an album bomb coming, this could well go to number one, and that might blunt the box's momentum long term. And that opens up Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa for a possible run too, as she rules airplay, has good sales, and could well make a run on streaming herself depending on how well future nostalgia picks up this Friday. I mean, the margins are tougher, but it is possible. Now, all this is left Life is Good by Future featuring Drake sliding down number four, which hit a hard cap on the radio and with as much streaming disruption hasn't exactly seemed all that stable. Now what has been stable is Circles by Post Malone at number 5, which has been wavering on the radio all week even as sales are down, but along that line we also got Roxanne by Arizona Service at number 6, where even as the radio is in free fall, it's got a good streaming week, it actually picked up a spot here because it had some radio inertia, even though that's probably more linked to Lil Uzi Vert songs falling out of the top 10. Case in point, breaking into the top 10 for the first First time, Adore You by Harry Styles at number 7. Most because the radio adores it. And I can unfortunately say something very similar for Intentions by Justin Bieber featuring Quavo up to number 8. Except that it's got traction in all channels. Wonderful. Hell, we even saw recoveries for Someone You Love by Louis Capaldi up to number 9. Still losing radio, but at least it has it. And Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish up to number 10 for much of the same reason. We'll come back to why that's relevant very soon. Now this takes us to our losers and dropouts and there's honestly not much of a story even here, especially considering our only dropout of significant size is Juicy by Doja Cat and Tyga, which will likely just be on the cusp of missing the year-end list. But for the majority of our losers, well, yeah, while Lil Uzi Vert lost a lot of songs, he kept a lot around too, with Baby Pluto at 27, P2 at 37, That Way at 41, Low Main at 42, Silly Watch at 52, Homecoming at 82, Footsall Shuffle 2020 at 94, and Prices at 95. But he's not the only one who saw debuts from last week plummet, like I Love Me by Demi Lovato at 43, and BS by Jeanne Aiko and Her at 57, which also translated to Pussy Fairies Slide Down 61 and BITCH by Megan Thee Stallion skidding back to 79. Now for the rest, a lot of continued losers on their way out like Sivio at Tu Mama, La Difficile and Vite by Bad Bunny down to 70, 82 and 92 respectively. And then for Lil Baby we saw heating up with Gunna at 73 and Emotionally Scarred at 85. And while Go Stupid by Polo G featuring NLE Choppa and Son of a Vegas also slid down to 96, the biggest story might be the total collapse of Yummy by Justin Bieber down to 78. It'll probably wind up with just enough points to make the year-end list, but this is disastrous in a way, and I'll admit, I did not expect, and he probably didn't either. But now we're getting to the bigger story, not the returns, which outside of Suicidal by YNW Melly getting a big remix of the late Juice World to spike up to 20, we just got Before You Go by Louis Capaldi at 97, Come Through by Summer Walker and Usher at 99, thanks to the video, and Make No Sense by Youngboy Never Broke Again at 100, but we gotta focus on our gains. And this is where we have to talk about the radio. And it's almost disgustingly obvious, and I've been talking about it for a good solid two years now. Yeah, the big streaming debuts can lead to the album bombs, but they rarely last. Which means that songs that have existing radio architecture behind them gain sustainability. And the songs that do are rarely all that interesting and take much in the way of chances because this is the radio. Yes. 
You saw rebounds from losses last week with Bop by DeBaby up to 24, High Fashion by Roddy Rich and Mustard at 33, Two Sub by Carol Jean and Nicki Minaj at 64 because that will not settle down, Grace by Lil Baby and 42 Doug at 75, and To Die For by Sam Smith at 84. But they're the exceptions, as is Oprah's bank account by Lil Yachty, Drake, and DeBaby, riding the star power and sheer weirdness to 55. Now I'm looking at the surge of Nashville country songs. I Hope You're Happy Now by Carly Pierce and Lee Bryce at 81. I Wish Grandpa's Never Die by Riley Green at 69. We Back by Jason Aldean at 67. Catch by Brett Young at 65. Slow Dance in a Parking Lot by Jordan Davis at 59. Chasing You by Morgan Wallen at 58. More Hearts Than Mine by Ingrid Andrus at 56. Nobody But You by Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani at 53. What She Wants Tonight by Luke Bryan at 49. I Hope by Gabby Barrett at 36. And most bizarrely, Homemade by Jake Owen continuing up to 39. And for the rest... Well, Fallen by Trevor Daniel might have just had a good week at 29. And Blueberry Fago by Lil Mosey's gonna become a streaming behemoth at 38. Probably gonna say something similar for What's Poppin' by Jack Harlow at 48. But Ritmo by the Black Eyed Peas and Jay Balvin is relying on radio. As is Slide by Her and YG at 47. And Hard on Ice by Rod Wave at 40. And Best on Earth by Russ and Bia at 46. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked by that one too. I mean, I gotta assume it's at least partially responsible for Sunday Best by Surfaces rebounding to 74. But you you want to know the biggest proof? The fact that No Guidance by Chris Brown featuring Drake is still here and up at 32. But now for the main event that thankfully feels a little smaller, our Love vs. The World 2 album bomb, which are the songs that fall below the top 40 and are neither best nor worst. Money Spread with Young Nudie at 89, Get the Guap with Young Thug at 87, Come This Way at 83, No Auto with Lil Durk at 76, Leaders with Nav at 72, Trap This Way This Way at 68, I Can Show You at 66, Was Up with Future at 54, and a special shout out for Moon Relate at 62 for just being absolutely insane. But now onto the rest of our new arrivals, starting off with number 98, Savage by Megan the Stallion. Sassy, moody, hey, nasty, hey, hey, yeah. Stupid. What was happening? Bitch. What was happening? Bitch. Am I the only one who is now thoroughly convinced that Megan's label doesn't have a goddamn clue what they're doing? You shot the video for Captain Hook, the best song on the album, and you were moving on it, but because this one caught more on TikTok, you're now running with this instead to chart? How is this not knowledge that you already didn't have going into the album release cycle? Or maybe you put off shooting the video until you've decided on your single choices based upon streaming reception? At least she picked one of the better songs to push with Megan's blunt exasperation and sharper flow against the flat minimalist melody and slivers of percussion of the bass rumble. That's fine, even if the content is also pretty by the numbers and it's flexing and vaguely reminiscent of her last project, Not A Lot Of Evolution. It's also not a good idea to call it your beef as being boring with the bitches because that attitude can translate to your song. But otherwise, I still like it. It's still good. I guess I'll take it. Number 91, Beer Can't Fix by Thomas Rhett featuring John Party. Ain't no pain it can't wash away From the moment that it hits your lips I literally forgot that this song existed when I covered Centerpoint Road last year. Even though it actually picked up John Party for a more neo-traditional touch with some of the pedal steel. Shame that it's only playing into a breezy drinking slash hookup song where John Party just sounds kind of awkward opposite all the tropical drums, the drum machine, the whistle, and even a splash of some horns by the final chorus. And it's not like Thomas Rudd or John Party have a ton of chemistry or interplay on this either. It's a weirdly flat and lethargic song, undoubtedly timed to get the big in the summer, but going on right now? Yeah, if only beer could fix this, beyond just the song being completely forgettable. Number 90, Cardigan by Don Tolliver. So I've heard some interesting things about that new Don Tolliver album that dropped, but given that no idea didn't really win me over, I wasn't expecting a lot out of this, which might have been the right idea, given that it's really a few extended hooks without much of a burst at all against a swampy groove with a little piano that can never coalesce into a stable tune. And even though I might be able to appreciate some of the atmosphere, Don Tolliver's warble doesn't really flatter the by the numbers brand name flexing, all the gunplay, and an utterly incoherent narrative where apparently someone is on his back and yet she's chasing a friend of theirs and he's trying to let that someone down easy. It's just messy in a way that's not even all that interesting because it's not like Don Tolliver is a 
force of unique personality besides being a little bit more nasal and kind of being in Travis Scott's camp. And while I can't really call it terrible because at least it's got a hook, it certainly is mediocre. Next, number 88, Super Lonely by Benny featuring Gus Dapperton. Okay, credit to good timing for a song with this title, although more because it blew up thanks to TikTok given that this song actually dropped in November of last year. But the uncanny thing is that it's not really a sad song. No, it's the jaunty thing with some really ugly grainy percussion and some limp attempts at funk in the bass line with Benny and Gus Dapperton slurring their way through autotune, taking the piss out of sadness with some degree of deflective irony. And yet, while I would agree that some of the super serious sad pop anthems are kind of garish and ridiculous and some of the self-awareness can help it's very gen z songs like this are just as performative as some of those sadder moments and there doesn't seem to be a real core to some of that affectation there's not really any sort of sincerity here or anything revealing about the performers just below the surface which just leaves this weird feeling of cheapness throughout the song it's a parody, almost, but, well, that's not quite hitting. So yeah, I, I don't really like this. Maybe it's a generational thing and I'm missing the catharsis somewhere, but yeah, for me, this ain't it. Number 86, Does To Me by Luke Combs featuring Eric Church. And then my non made much to you, but it does to me. Well, I was wondering when this would finally start charting, arguably one of the best songs from Luke Combs' last album, and the sort of collaboration that honestly makes way too much sense. Where both men play into the hyper-detailed, sad sack vibe where they can highlight the few places that they do excel, and even if nobody else really cares, it matters to them. Luke Combs being the middle-of-the-road journeyman, and Eric Church the rugged vinyl nerd. And I like that on the second verse, Luke Combs highlights one of those areas that excels for him is in integrity, camaraderie. It's a small little detail, but one I appreciate. Now, I do wish the lead guitar tone was a little bit warmer in the melody. It's ever so slightly wonky, and that kind of throws me off the song a little bit. But when you got an otherwise pretty solid neo-traditional song, really damn good. I'm happy it's here. Let's actually hope it survives and sticks around. Number 71, Deathbed by Paufu featuring Be A Bad Doobie. I'll make a cup of coffee for your head. Again, a bit of a fortuitous title in a bleak time that also went viral off TikTok, but this has got a slightly weirder story. It caught fire on SoundCloud last year, but since Paufu didn't clear the Be A Bad Doobie sample from 2017 immediately, it took about a year to hit streaming sites properly and then go viral. And I gotta wonder if that was kind of worth it, because the sample's just chipmunked, and from the original acoustic version of a watery ramshackle beat, where Paufu just walks through what could just be a breakup, or him dying in that bed, especially going off that first verse. And uh, I see how it could work, but the melodrama feels kind of mawkish and weirdly flat to me. It reminds me of those puppy compilations you see on YouTube where the postscript is, oh, we had to put her down. It's just this jarring tonal mix that doesn't quite coalesce for me. Again, I appreciate the sincerity, and again, this might be a generational thing, but Palfu's delivery and content doesn't really sell that all that well, especially with the implication that it could all be about way less. I don't know. I'm not quite on board here. There's some of that artificiality. Not bad, but... Not precisely good. Number 60, Strawberry Peels by Lil Uzi Vert featuring Young Thug and Gunna. Strawberry Peels, Strawberry Peels, Strawberry Peels, Strawberry Peels, Strawberry Peels, Strawberry Peels. Okay, first off, putting Young Thug and Gunna as guests on the same song, it's redundant. Gunna adds nothing to this beyond saying this girl's gonna suck his dick until snot comes out her nose. That's disgusting! But it's not like Thugger's doing much better in saying that he's fucking girls straight off the boat from Israel, and then repeating strawberry peels until your skull cracks. And then we got Lil Uzi Vert saying that his girl is spoiled like old milk, that she's putting the dick in her gut for the guilt, and that this girl's giving him brain, that's that Urkel and chill. All that combined with a song that's not even two minutes long, and one that doesn't have anything close to a melody and it's all squonking flatness, it's not the worst little Uzi Vert song I've heard this past two weeks, but it's close. And on that topic, number 45, Lotus by Lil Uzi Vert. Sing 
See, everything I described about the last song, it's more obviously bad, but Lotus touches a different nerve for me, most because of his nasal mumbling brang that's not even on beat, it's just insufferable, especially when he's backing up the same brand name porn and shallow flexing that doesn't really work all that well when it feels this sour. Again, I said this last week, Uzi songs work when they're ridiculous, over the top, and kind of fun. When you got that flat synth tone and cheap drum machines here, there's none of it. Next, number 26, Yaskurski by Lil Uzi Vert and 21 Savage. Oh you got engaged, but she still wanna slurp ski. Look, I want to stick up for 21 here. His flat ruthlessness can at least be distinctive at points, and his flexing can be intimidating, even if the by the third verse he's fucking your girl and comparing himself to the Taliban. But luxury rap in any form is really not his strong suit, and that becomes true very fast. Especially opposite Lil Uzi first stealing your fiancé, pimping that fiancé, and then shooting people as he drives around. Now, the most I can stick up for here is the faded loop behind the cheap drum machine, but that doesn't even save that much. Especially when Uzi can barely stay on beat to save his life. Thoroughly mediocre, at best. Next. Number 19, Bean Kobe by Lil Uzi Vert featuring Chief Keef. You know this is Chief Keef's biggest charting hit? Yeah, he had his moments with I Don't Like and Love Sosa in 2012, eight years ago. But now Uzi's recruited him for a collaboration, and I genuinely hope they didn't just tack on Kobe's name for additional search results and a single reference to a lot more flexing. Because that's really what the majority of this is. Brand name flexing, an incredibly monotonous repeated hook, fucking your girl, and Chief Keep not really having much more to say beyond tacking on his intro to the end of his verse to elongate it. It's actually kind of a shame how limited this song is, especially when you have more flat synths and cheap sounding drum machines that only kind of get scratchy at the end. I, I mean, you have to know this is where Chief Keek could really show out and he had to know that, right? Uh, again, it's mediocre. Not a fan. And finally, number 13, Myron by Lil Uzi Vert. You know what, I'll say this, a little Uzi Vert songs I have to talk about, arguably the best? Yeah, he's still fucking your girl, your mom, your auntie, and then bragging about wearing Supreme, and then saying that he's got a banana clip but won't slip on the peel. But the watery and spacey sense of some swell when they sharpen into the hook and the beat's a little heavier. But we're still stuck with Uzi describing getting head like a migraine. And really, if we're at that level, do I even need to say more to dignify this level of mediocrity? Ugh, whatever. Anyway, Lil Uzi Vert's getting the worst of the week with Lotus as a dishonorable mention, and Strawberry Peels with Gunna and Young Thug as the worst overall. It's not the worst of them that I've heard from recently, but it's bad. Best? You know what? I wanted to say Uzi could get something, but it's really savaged by Megan Thee Stallion for the honorable mention, and Does For Me by Luke Combs and Eric Church as the clear standout. Not particularly close either. Next week, we'll see if any of this survives the weekend album bomb, because that's gonna be something. But hey, until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll